I welcome you all in this video program of planning. In this program, today we have our guest, Dr. B. K. Pandey. He is associated with the Planning Commission of India. He is here with us to discuss more comprehensively about planning, the objective and needs of planning. About this program, before we start, so I want to say only one thing. As we all know, if we are not planning, means we are planning to fail or we are we can say that failing to plan is also planning to fail only if we are not planning also then also we are planning for some negative results so why not to plan and planning is the need of our everywhere we need to plan something we need to plan even for small event for our future also because we people, our learners are future goal oriented, they also plan for something. Today we will discuss about planning, about economic planning in India. So I request our uh, expert of the day, this program, to start with the planning in India about economics planning. Sir, please. Thank you, Dr. Manis. And I am grateful to National Open School for uh, inviting me to deliberate on this important topic. Today we will... Uh, take up this uh, very interesting uh, subject of uh, planning in India and why planning is required uh, uh, for uh, all organization, uh, uh, not only organization, whether they are in private sector or in public sector or even country as a whole, uh, why it is important to plan. First of all, what is a plan? Plan gives us some kind of uh, direction some kind of you know goal uh, and how this goal is to be achieved uh, by which kind of resources what kind of manpower uh, requirement what is the material requirement uh, as you can uh, see planning uh, is uh, an attempt uh, to to find direction to find resources uh, and to put uh, where our resources should be used uh, and in which direction the country has to go, what are the critical areas, uh, what are the gaps which needs to be filled up. We started planning uh, process in 1951 and for that we created one institution which is known as Planning Commission of India. The Planning Commission of India which was set up in 1951 by a government resolution and this resolution created one central uh, body known as Planning Commission of India and this is headed by the Prime Minister of the country. Uh, in any plan we take what is the, we assess what is the critical gaps which needs to be filled up, what are the priority areas and we take assessment of the situation and then we plan and we see how, what are the main objectives, what are the you know uh, areas which require a special effort and how these these resources and this plan have to be implemented and then we we monitor it also like when the plan is executed we have a mid term appraisal which takes into account how this uh, you know in whether we are on the path whether we are deviating from the path what are the corrective measures which has to be taken all these exercises are underway when the plan is under execution. Now let us look at the broad objective of the planning. In India, if you look at our planning you know, history or planning process, we find that we have been or our planning process has been concerned with economic growth, how to increase the rate of growth of the country, how to you know, be self-reliant in certain critical and strategic areas, how to remove unemployment, how to reduce income inequality and how to reduce level of poverty in the country. So this has been the objectives of the planning and these are the common theme in all the plans that whatever may be the specific goals of a particular plan, these, these common theme we will find woven in each plan. Now let us look at the first five year plan. The first five year plan which is started in and which period was 1951 to 1956. In this plan 
you will find that our emphasis was on agriculture development and we targeted that our agriculture development should, should be given priority, the plan address, you know, uh, this sector, agrarian sector and lot of irrigation projects came up and we made investment in dams and as a result our agriculture growth picked up during this plan. Then we come to the second five year plan where the emphasis was on industrialization and this was a very important plan. The period was 1956 to 1961 and during this period we planned heavy industrialization of the country and public sector was given a lot of importance in this plan. And the public sector units like steel you know plants were set up during this plan and this plan was, was based on the model developed by Prasant Chandra Mahalobis who was a statistician and he gave a lot of emphasis on capital goods sector. So, this plan is known for pushing initialization in the country to give priority to the public sector units and this laid a solid foundation of industrialization in the country. Then we came to third five year plan where again the emphasis was on agriculture because we found that to some extent agriculture was neglected during the second five year plan. So, again the focus shifted to improving production in agriculture especially green revolution you know that that uh, the, the seeds for green revolution were sown during this period of third five year plan and there was an emphasis on increasing productivity in rice, wheat and this plan also made efforts to provide more employment opportunities to the people in the country and the target for growth was 5 percent. The fourth five year plan, the period is 1969 to 1974 and here the emphasis was on self-reliance and the growth rate was targeted to be achieved as 5.7 percent and lot of emphasis was put on increasing export in this plan and also there was reforms and restructuring of government expenditure that was the agenda of this fourth five year plan. In fifth five year plan the emphasis was on employment, poverty elevation and how to have social and economic justice and this plan also put emphasis on expansion of productive employment and fuller utilization of existing skills and equipment. So, this plan was aimed at utilizing our resources in efficient manner and how to use existing skills and equipment for faster economic development. In sixth five year plan, the emphasis was on family planning to improve productivity in the economy, to modernize the technological level of the country to develop indigenous energy and efficient energy uses to promote improved quality of life of citizens. So, this was also an, an important event in the planning because this plan wanted that country should modernize and become technologically self-reliance. In the seventh five year plan which, which took up the goal of social justice, removal of operation of the weak, it used, it, it focused on how to use modern technology, how to use agricultural development and it also started anti-poverty programs and to increase productivity of small and large scale farmers. So, these were some of the critical issues which were dealt during 7th five year plan. In 8th five year plan, the period was 1992, uh, 1992 to 1997 and here again emphasis was on modernization of industries and, and during this plan Indian economy was gradually opened 
to world economy. It, it has started the process of linking Indian economy with the world economy and major ob objectives of this plan included containing population growth, poverty reduction, employment generation, strengthening the infrastructure, institutional building, human resource development, involvement of Panchayat Raj, Nagar Palikas, NGOs and decentralization and people's participation in the execution of planning projects. In 9th 5 year plan, the period involved 1997 to 2002 and the main aim were speedy industrialization, human development, full scale employment, poverty reduction, self-reliance on domestic resources and main objective of the plan were to prioritize agriculture sector because the agriculture growth was coming down to emphasize on rural development to generate adequate employment opportunities and to promote poverty reduction and to ensure food and nutritional security of the citizens of the country. In 10th five year plan, the period 2002 to 2007, the main objective of the 10th five year plan were reduction of poverty, providing gainful and high quality employment and reduction in gender gaps in literacy and wage rate by at least 50% by 2007 and how to increase literacy rate to 75% within the 10th plan period. So, these were the major objectives of 10th 5 year plan. 11th plan which is started in 2007 and which ended just last year. In this plan, the emphasis was to increase the growth rate and the, the objective was to increase the GDP growth rate from 8 to 10 percent and then maintain 10 percent the growth rate in the 12th plan which is begin very soon during 2012 and agriculture growth rate was targeted to 4 percent per year and it was also planned to create 70 million new job opportunities to reduce infant mortality rate to 28 and maternal mortality rate to 1 per 1000 live worth to provide clean drinking water for all the uh, people by 2009 and to ensure that there are no slip up in these targets. In infrastructure, the 11th plan tried to ensure electricity connection to all villages and BPL households by 2009 and to provide round the clock power to ensure all weather road connection to all habitations with population above 1000 and to connect every village by telephone by November 2007 and to provide broadband connectivity to all villages by 2012. In environment, the goal of the 11th plan was to increase forest cover by 5 percent to attain WHA standards of air quality in all major cities by 2011-12 to treat all urban waste water by 2011-12 to clean river waters and to increase energy efficiency by 20 percent point by 2016-17. So, these were the goals of infrastructure in the 11th five year plan. If we look at what has happened and our experience with the 11th plan, we find that we have managed to achieve a growth rate of about 8 percent during the 11th plan and which is although sort of the target of 9 percent, but looking at global crisis and drought in certain part of the country, this can be taken as a very good achievement of planning. Second, the we have also seen very impressive progress in area of agriculture growth, poverty reduction education, health, upliftment of SC, STs and minority communities during this plan. So, 11th plan can be summed up as a very successful planning experience. Now, if we look at 12th plan which is going to be launched uh, very soon, uh, the, this is the first year of the 12th five year plan that is 2012-17. 
and the planning commission has already discussed what should be the approach to the 12th five year plan. As you know, every plan when it is launched, it has to be approved by the national development council and the meeting of the national development council which is attended by all the chief ministers and governors and the important ministers of the central uh, cabinet. This is likely to meet sometime very soon and they will finalize what should be the main priorities and main objective of the 12th five year plan. The planning commission has already put you know some of the critical issues and has sought the uh, comments of the public and the civil society at large. These comments are being uh, taken into account while formulating the plan and if we look at planning commission approach to the 12th five year plan, we find that this plan the basic objective is going to be faster growth rate, more inclusive and sustainable growth. It would aim perhaps 9 to 9.5 percent growth. The area will be where more effort will be needed will be energy, water and warming and also there will emphasis on education and health sector and agriculture growth may be targeted at 4 percent. So, in I have tried to uh, cover uh, the planning history of India from 1951 to uh, starting from first five year plan to 12th uh, beginning of the 12th five year plan. And we find that we have been able to achieve a lot of uh, success in terms of poverty reduction, uh, in terms of uh, faster growth. India is one of the leading country in the world where the growth uh, has been very high about 7 to 8 percent in the last uh, decade and this has resulted in uh, reduction of poverty. Uh, this has led us uh, to be self-reliant in many areas and what we find that uh, in the 12th five year plan we will try to uh, we will try to take up those areas. Uh, like we will focus more on inclusive growth, we will try to uh, focus on those areas which are backward or those communities which have not joined the mainstream. So, that is going to be the challenge for the 12th five year plan and for that consultation process is on and very soon uh, you will find that the, uh, the 12th plan will be launched. Sir, we got independence in 1947, but we have started our planning process means planning decisions in 1951. Why we are late for three years? India became republic in 1950 yes, okay. and after India becoming republic in 1950, uh, we started uh, although uh, the it is not that the planning uh, there was no idea of planning. Mm -hmm. uh, even prior to independence, uh, there was a Bombay plan. Okay. And uh, even in the you know uh, the Congress uh, committee uh, meetings, uh, uh, Pandit Nehru, uh, the first Prime Minister, uh, even prior to independence, had talked about uh, that uh, planning uh, bill be required uh, to put country on the high growth uh, path, and he was influenced by the Soviet model. So, it took some time uh, to formulate and to, to come out with you know a strategy of planning and to put the institutions uh, which are required to formulate and to implement the planning. So, it took some time. Okay. So, it was not that the planning uh, was uh, yes there was some delay, mm -hmm. but uh, before you launch a plan you need certain you know certain institutions to, uh, which can monitor and that is why planning commission was created in 1950 uh, by a cabinet resolution uh, and, uh, and, uh, and prime minister was made its chairman uh, and it shows the importance which was given to uh, planning in India. Okay. And we also have questions from our learners. We have first question from first Sir, my name is Manish, Sir, name is Manish Jain and I am also an NIOS learner. My question to you is planning is pervasive. Yes, it is a very good question Manish. Uh, planning is pervasive in the sense uh, that uh, you know planning nobody can afford to ignore planning uh, because if you ignore uh, planning 
uh, then you are you know planning uh, for failure as uh, Dr. Manis uh, said in the beginning itself. So, uh, whether uh, it is a small organization, whether it is a private sector or public sector, today every organization has plans and uh, because if you plan then you can visualize, you can, uh, you can anticipate and you can uh, mobilize resources. Uh, instead of you know being unprepared, planning makes you you know uh, ready for meeting the challenge. Uh, so planning is required, uh, and it is all pervasive in the sense that it is required by uh, all the organizations, and that is why uh, the country, the even uh, national uh, you know priorities are to be tackled by right kind of planning. So planning enables you to prioritize, it enables you to uh, find the direction, where are we going, how we will go and what are the resources required for, you know, going uh, where we intend to go. So, that way I think, yes, planning is, I agree that planning is uh, all pervasive uh, to, to a great extent. I mean, we cannot afford to, uh, afford not to plan. Sir, my name is Samyak Jain and I am also an IOS learner. My question is, what is self-reliance? Self-reliance means the country should be able to meet its requirement through its own internal sources. Uh, and this has been one of the, you know, important uh, objective of uh, our plan that in certain critical areas like food, like energy and uh, in other uh, areas, we should be able to meet our requirements by, by domestic production. And to a large extent, you will find that if we have been able to meet uh, and we have achieved the goal of self-reliance. Today, India is self-reliant in a matter of food uh, safety, uh, food security. And uh, as you know, before uh, independence, India uh, was in a very bad state and we have been able to meet. So, self-reliance is a very important objective and uh, we have been able to uh, fulfill uh, and we have become self-reliant in many critical areas of the economy. So, sir, uh, at the end, uh, I just conclude with this, that in present scenario, all visionary people, visionary organization, institution, government organization, they are planning because they are visionary or they want to become successful uh, if they plan in a very appropriate and very critical way. This is the thing. Ki, like we said, ki planning is pervasive. So, pervasive nature of planning make it compulsory, mandatory or it is a normal course of action ki we have to plan everywhere. Uh, Dr. Manish, uh, we cannot uh, you know, uh, undermine the importance of planning, but there has been some change uh, in our, you know, uh, we have moved from Mindset. you know command planning to indicative planning. Yes, yes. Like we are giving a lot of uh, importance to private sector. Mm -hmm. Earlier, a state or public sector, they were playing uh, uh, a critical role in our economic development. But now, if you find in the uh, from tenth uh, plan or onwards, we are giving a lot of uh, emphasis to private sector because a lot of dynamism in the economy mm -hmm. comes from private sector. Yes. So, how private sector can be galvanized, how they can be made, you know, more uh, dynamic and the planning uh, commission or the planning process is to provide some kind of incentive to them. So, we want uh, that private sector should play a very great role in the planning process. So, okay. the role of planning is there, uh, it mm -hmm. will be there for the government and for the uh, public sector will continue to play. Uh, important role, but we also want that private sector should come out with initiatives and uh, the uh, focus of uh, the 12th plan will be how to uh, make private sector more dynamic, more and dynamic. in the economy. Okay. That is uh, what uh, we intend to. Okay. Thank you, sir, for being with us, for supporting our learner in knowing what is planning in their life also and in uh, running our economy in a very perfect way and I on behalf of NIUS I extend my heartfelt thanks to you for sparing your valuable time for us 
for giving and enlighten our uh, learners also with your thoughts and what you are doing at your department is the same all about the planning so we do have other session also now in the another sessions we will take some case studies related to planning in different different areas sir. Thank, thank you, you for thank you dr manish and i am thankful to national open school uh, for inviting me and i have also uh, you know learned uh, by participating in this uh, very interesting uh, discussion and and the role of planning thank you thank you sir घर बैठे पाए राष्ट्रीय मुक्त विद्यालय शिक्षा संस्थान यानी एन में एडमिशन वो भी एकदम आसान तरीके से जिससे शिक्षार्थियों को होगी समय और धन दोनों की बचत एन से शिक्षा कभी भी कहीं भी शिक्षार्थियों क्या आप जानते हैं एन में एडमिशन लेने का सरल और सुगम तरीका जिससे शिक्षार्थियों को ऑनलाइन प्रवेश लेने में सहूलियत मिलती है एन में प्रवेश की प्रक्रिया पूर्णतया ऑनलाइन है शिक्षार्थी घर बैठे इंटरनेट द्वारा प्रवेश के लिए सबसे पहले एन की वेबसाइट www.nios.ac.in पर लॉगिन करें अपना ईमेल आईडी और पासवर्ड डालकर अपना पंजीकरण करें पंजीकरण के बाद लॉगिन करने पर ऑनलाइन प्रवेश हेतु आवेदन पत्र को लेगा आवेदन पत्र को निर्देशानुसार भरें और प्रिंट आउट ले इस प्रिंट आउट पर अपनी फोटो संलग्न करें ऑनलाइन प्रवेश के लिए शुल्क हेतु भुगतान के तरीके हैं क्रेडिट कार्ड के द्वारा डेबिट कार्ड के द्वारा राष्ट्रीकृत बैंक के ड्राफ्ट के माध्यम से जो कि सचिव एन नई दिल्ली या नोएडा के पक्ष में देय हो भरे हुए आवेदन पत्र के साथ साथ डिमांड ड्राफ्ट और संलग्न किए जाने वाले दस्तावेज हैं जन्म रजिस्ट्रार के जिला कार्यालय से जारी जन्म प्रमाण पत्र की सत्यापित प्रति जिसमें जन्म तिथि अंकित हो पिछले विद्यालय से प्राप्त विद्यालय छोड़ने का प्रमाण पत्र जिसमें आवेदक की जन्म तिथि लिखी हो प्रवेश फॉर्म का प्रिंट आउट एन के संबद्ध क्षेत्र केंद्रों पर 10 दिनों में पहुंच जाना चाहिए अन्यथा उचित दस्तावेज ना लगे होने पर आवेदन फॉर्म रद्द किया जा सकता है प्रवेश प्रक्रिया की पुष्टि होने के बाद शिक्षार्थियों को परिचय पत्र व अध्ययन सामग्री डाक द्वारा तुरंत पहुंचाई जाती है ऑनलाइन प्रवेश एक बहुत ही सुगम और सुविधाजनक प्रवेश प्रणाली है ऑनलाइन ऑन टाइम फॉर सेफ एंड सिक्योर एडमिशन